Joseph James Hartman. In this series, Janice shares her journey through trauma, injury, illness, mental imbalance, addictions, suicide, self-harm, gender identity, battered by religion, and identity. Discover a world seldom seen or experienced by most people. Janice takes us on a journey as she guides us through the desires, fears, failures, hopes, and victories she faced. Through her eyes, others can see how to face these challenges with hope, understanding, determination, and encouragement, no matter how devastating one's future looks. It truly is one of the greatest miraculous stories in our generation. For friends, families, churches, or groups that are reaching out to others, her story will provide necessary insight in how to help. For victims, they will find answers. If you haven't read her biography yet, you may want to get one as it goes more into detail about her life, as well as provides the documentation behind the story. Visit our website at sentenceofdeathdestinedforlife.com for more information. Thank you. And what had happened was at the time of, I, I, I picked the wrong time. I thought I picked the right time because just when they're they're doing their uh, their rounds, well, after they do the, the, the nurses do their rounds and check on the patients, then they go in to report. And then they report everything that, that went on during the day and they, they go over everything. And they're finishing up for that, <clears throat> that, that day themselves before they change shifts. So I thought, okay, this is a good time when they go in to report. And, there's, and so I went ahead and did that and evidently I was off on my timing because I kept hearing, open the door, open the door. And I heard some banging, but it wasn't on this level here. It was kind of there somewhere, you know, because I was evidently I was leaving my body, and uh, they were pushing the door, trying to push the door open. My legs were out there in the way. It's a small bathroom, just big enough for a shower, commode, and a sink. And so, the, uh, pushing on the door, pushing on the door, it somehow it, it brought me back. I wasn't quite gone, because they got there just in time to loosen the, the tie around my neck, you know, the, the, the belt. And off I went again to ICU. I hated that place. Isolation and being on watch again. And to me, it was equal to, be, to have gotten a spanking, you know, getting a spanking from a parent. Um, that's how it felt to me because I got in trouble. So to me, it was like that. So, again, it was a failed attempt. It was almost a, a real deal, though. And it's embarrassing, it's upsetting. I'm still here, still suffering. And, you know, nobody could tell you just to, uh, well, just pull up your bootstraps, you know, and stop being this way. It's like, you tell me how, I will. How? How do I not think this way? How do I not feel this way? How do I not be this? You know, I'm tormented, I'm tortured in my mind, in my heart, my emotions. And I'm alone in it because you guys don't get it. You know, nobody gets it, they just don't understand. Well, what have you got to be all sad and sorrowed about? And why, why do you want to die though? I mean, you know, we understand that you're having a hard time, but why do you want to die? Why do you keep bringing us through all this? Um, it's just hard. It's hard on both sides. And, you know, the people that love you just want you to stop. Will you just stop it? It's like, teach me how. And I will. Uh, I'm just not, I don't belong here anymore. There's no place for me. I don't have any life. 